everyone, Justine with Blue Jay Orchids. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of Orchid Wind Down Wednesday. So, cheers. And as always, please drink responsibly. And this episode is going to be a little different. Sorry. And we are drinking a pop. Pothic Red Winemaker's Blend tonight, just because it's at Costco, and I already had it open, so I wanted to finish it. Nothing too fancy tonight. And I'm not seated, so we're not going to do a chat tonight, but I do have an orchid rescue I want to bring you guys along with me. I had a Schomburgia cross that I had sitting in a basket that the center was rotting out, so it needed attention. It needed attention for a while, I just didn't get around to it. So I finally got around to doing it, decided to film it. And then I did a voiceover over it, so I'll walk you through what I was doing. But I'm pretty happy with how the rescue turned out. I have it growing on a much better way now. So you will see the finished rescue at the very end, and I'll do a little sign off again. And with that, cheers. I will see you at the end of the video. Orchid rescue time. Hey everyone, Justine with Blue Jay Orchids. Welcome to this orchid rescue. I didn't talk because um, I was kind of in a rush, so I didn't want to think about what I was going to say and explain it. It takes me a lot longer to do something if I'm going to explain it. But I still wanted to film it because, as you can definitely see, this poor orchid needed rescuing. So from what I can gather, it looks like it has, I might say it a little wrong, but it has fusarium, I'm pretty sure. That is the purple ring. Some people call it the purple ring of death or if we're being nice and alive and i have had fusarium quite a lot just because i grow outside and it's bad but it's not as bad as what some people say so as i was cutting through it i did definitely notice some purple in like the rhizome which is what uh classifies it as fusarium that and just you can kind of tell by the way it looks if you look in the center, it's like rot. It's trying to outgrow the rotting, basically, if you kind of look at it. So it's trying really hard. It's a Schomburgia cross or Mecrophylla or it, the new word is hard. I like Schomburgia. It's easier. Anyway, it's like a Schomburgia Shambo cat cross. But you can see it's trying to basically run away from the fungus and it's trying to outgrow it. So what I'm doing in the video is, if you notice, I'm sanitizing my tools with every cut, because if I am cutting fusarium, I don't want to like sanitize, then cut clean tissue, then cut again. So one of the treatments for fusarium is to cut it out, basically. So you're looking for the new growth without the purple ring. There was still some purple left in some of the new growths. I did throw out some. That whole center area is pretty much garbage. And then you don't want to reuse any of this. The basket's pretty old and the media, so it's not like I wanted to reuse it. But you definitely don't want to reuse it because that's how it spreads. And I'm trying to think of what else is... So what I ended up doing is I ended up getting a bunch of pieces. I looked through them to see which ones looked the healthiest, and then I ended up mounting them. So I'll show you at the very end how I mounted them. And I mean, I was in a little bit of a hurry as I was doing it, but sometimes plant chores is therapeutic in a way. I feel bad because this plant wasn't as bad. I just, I couldn't get around to it with the kids and all. 
So it definitely is worse than it needs to be, but there's still hope. And then after um, you separate it and clean it up and everything, it's a good idea to hit it with some fungicide, ideally a systemic fungicide, because then it's going to get into the tissues. And there are certain fungicides that debatable whether it actually can help with fusarium. I, I don't know for sure, but I've heard banrot can help with fusarium. And there's a few other t- others like Heritage I heard might help, but I don't know if anyone's really done full research on it. Something I'll have to look into more. But I do know that spraying it with the fungicide definitely is a good option and letting it soak in there for whatever the label says is also a good option. And then actually, if you guys watch other YouTubers, there's um, Nina from Ninja Orchids. She does a lot, well, not a lot of videos, but she has some very good videos on Fusarium that I've seen that um, she does a very good job of explaining them. So you can see here, we've gotten quite a bit of division already and we're still working on a little bit more. And you can also, oh, I did speed up the video and then I filmed it from above. So the angle's a little wonky, but I was trying to figure out the uh, best way to do it. it. I did it outside too. So there's not a whole lot of good places for my tripod to be, but um, I feel like you, it's kind of cool to see like the upward perspective. It's kind of like you're looking down on it. So it's interesting. And yeah, so like I said, this plant was pretty bad. You can see none of the roots really look very good. That's another sign of fusarium most likely. And um, you can see that some of the growths actually look okay, though. So it'll be interesting to see um, how it comes back. Because sometimes the good news is it's a hybrid. It's not like a bifoliate Cattleya species. So hybrid, there's a reason they say hybrid vigor. So this is a very good, aggressive growing orchid. It definitely has a chance. I'm just going to have to baby it, like not let it get cold and kind of keep an eye on it for a little bit. So we'll see. I'll do like an update post and let you know how it does, if it's in the trash or if it's still um, around. But I I have hope. I'm not ready to sign it off yet. And yeah, so hopefully you guys like this. This is also just a good division overview. Even if you don't have a sick plant, you'll have natural separation of where you can divide it. And the rule is typically you want three healthy pseudobulbs before you make a division. Obviously, if it depends on what you're trying to do for taking apart an orchid or dividing an orchid. This one was just literally like falling apart. So it just made sense to do more smaller clumps. And with the fact that it has fusarium most likely as well, doing the smaller clumps lets me cut away more of the infected tissue. And yeah, but say you have a healthy plant and you're just dividing it, you can divide it in half or you can keep like a huge plant and then just take off a few little pieces. So if you're doing that, you want to have at least three pseudobulbs. That way you're not putting on too much stress on the plant that you're dividing. Because you need to have some energy left in the plant division so that it can put out roots and continue to grow and not get too set back. Because some plants really like to pout. Some plants do better. It just, it depends on care, environments, There's a lot of variables that can go into orchid growing. And my best advice as far as growing orchids is have fun with it. Experiment a little bit. And you have to find what works for you. There are certain core principles that you need to be aware of. For example, sanitizing tools and having some understanding of viruses those would be the core principles. 
And then everything else, it just depends on your environment, how much energy you want to put into it. Like there's no rule that says you have to do pest spraying with toxic chemicals. There's no rule that says you have to do fungicide with toxic chemicals. There are natural ways. The natural way is just a lot harder. But it all comes down to what type of comfort and how you want to grow. It all comes down to what you want to do. So that's my little spiel. Hopefully you guys are liking, um, you know, the rescue video. Let me know what you think in the comments. So this is about a week or so after. So you can see I have new root growth, which is great. That's a good sign. And overall, looks like the plant's doing okay. I will continue to monitor it and keep an eye on it. Also baby it some, like I'm not going to let it get too cold. And I'm probably going to be applying more fungicide than I normally would, just because I'm pretty sure it had fusarium or another fungal issue, which is why it was deteriorating so bad. And I, I have a fair bit of hope that this plant is going to make a good recovery and eventually cover them out. So I think it's going to be pretty fun to watch it grow. And eventually maybe I'll bring it in bloom back to a orchid wind down Wednesday. So that would be the goal. And I think it's definitely doable. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and please like comment, subscribe, share. Like I said, I do want to do a giveaway. I just need to get to a certain percent. I'm leaning towards maybe doing a giveaway at 800. So that's not that far away. And I'm very excited and very appreciative with how the channel is growing. And just want to thank everyone who has commented, did anything to help my channel grow. It's been a little over a year now and it's just been such an amazing experience. I was really nervous with doing the channel originally because I am heavier than I used to be from having kids and it's very vulnerable to start a channel and it's very intimidating. So just the fact that I have this many subscribers and supporters and for the most part all I've gotten is love from our orchid community I just, I really want to say thank you and how much I appreciate it and just look forward to keep growing with everyone. So hopefully you learned something because that's always my goal to kind of help people learn stuff and being in the orchid like hobby growing for about three years now or so, maybe four years, give or take, I can't, math is not my strong point. But anyway, so like, I don't have tons of years under my belt. I still remember what it was like learning everything. And some of it's just very intimidating to learn. And I think we're always still learning. There's always new ways of doing something. And just because one person does something one way doesn't mean that's the only way. And it also doesn't mean that's the right way for you. Your environment is different. Your ability to take care of an orchid is different. And even just how people water orchids is different. So again, just really want to thank everyone and hope everyone has a great rest of the night. See you guys on the next video and keep growing. Bye. Oh, I just had a random thought too. For anyone who is paying attention to the video, you'll notice my hair was longer and then it was shorter. So I did some voiceover the night before and then I got my hair cut this morning. So a lot shorter hair now. Yeah, but I, I normally do about two or three haircuts a year and I just let it grow and then I chop it all off and then let it grow, chop it all off. It's kind of, sometimes I add highlights, but I'm not a high maintenance girly. I don't really do tons of stuff with my hair. But anyway, no one is going crazy. Yes, I cut my hair, it's shorter. So just thought I would throw that little bit in. But yeah, see you guys.